Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel and welcome back to the series where we aim to take electronic circuit concepts and demonstrate them in a practical manner to make what seems as an abstract idea or an abstract theme in the field of electronics and electrical engineering and make it more tangible and easy to understand. This video aims to look at capacitors and more importantly how we can measure capacitance with the help of a multimeter or how to measure series and parallel capacitance. The last video took a look at how capacitors charge and discharge, what capacitors are and the different types of capacitors and in this video we will be looking at how to calculate the series and parallel capacitance. In this video we will need two capacitors, a breadboard and a multimeter. I will be using 22 microfarads capacitor and a 10 microfarad capacitor and you can use any two capacitors that are fully discharged to follow me in this video. But before we start, if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so either through subscribing or through joining the Patreon, which you will find linked in the description below. I'd also like to clarify that this video assumes that the, the viewer is familiar with nodes, meshes, loops, and branches as well as breadboards, and if you're not, you can check out the video on the topic. This video also assumes that you have used multimeters before and that you own one and understand how to navigate it. If you don't, please refer to the videos that I've made on how you can use multimeters to measure voltage and measure resistance, as well as current. Don't worry, we will be looking at how we can use multimeters to measure capacitance in this video. So first things first, how can we measure a capacitance with the help of multimeters? Before we look into that, it's really important to make sure that before using any capacitor and measuring its capacitance, that the capacitor has no charge, meaning that the capacitor is fully discharged. And you can check for that by measuring the voltage across the capacitor after unplugging the power supply. If, if, if it's charged, if there is a voltage across the capacitor, if it's fully charged, then you must discharge it. And you can do so through removing and unplugging the power supply, connecting a high resistance like a 20 kilo ohm resistor across the capacitor terminals for about five seconds, then you can use the multimeter to confirm that the capacitor is fully discharged. To measure capacitance, you must ensure that the capacitance isn't charged through using the multimeter and voltmeter mode and measuring the voltage across it, turning the dial to the capacitance measurement mode, placing the leads across the capacitor, polarity is not that important, you just make need to make sure that the black lead of the multimeter is, is, is connected to the COM port and the red lead of the multimeter is connected to the port that measures capacitance. Then you can read the measurements displayed. If the capacitance is within the measurement range, the multimeter will display the, the capacitor's value. And if it's not within the range, measurement range, you will either see OL or the number one on the screen. And that could be either that the capacitor is faulty or the capacitance value is much higher than the measurement range, which usually is the case. Before jumping over to the workbench to measure capacitance, let's take a look at series and parallel capacitance and how to measure the equivalent series and equivalent parallel capacitance. When looking at the series capacitance, or a series of capacitors connected in series, the equivalent capacitance of these series ca capacitors is equal to the sum of inverse individual capacitances. This means that we expect the equivalent capacitance to be less than any individual capacitance in the circuit. As for parallel capacitors that are connected in parallel, the equivalent capacitance 
in the circuit equals the sum of the individual capacitance. And this means that the equivalent capacitance in a parallel circuit of parallel capacitors is greater than any individual capacitance. So let's start with calculating the series capacitance. We have two series capacitors of 22 microfarads and 10 microfarads. Therefore, calculating the sum of inverse individual capacitances of these two capacitors will give us 6.875 microfarads. So let's jump over to the workbench and verify if our calculations are correct. So first things first, let's make sure that our capacitors are not charged and you can do so through checking the voltage across each capacitor. And I've went ahead and checked for these two capacitors and they're fully discharged. There is no charge across it. There's no voltage across it. Therefore, uh, let's first take a look at our series capacitance. For two capacitors, one that is 22 microfarads and the other that is 10.35 microfarads. And to do so, let's first turn the dial to the capacitance quadrant in our case, it's um, this quadrant. And I will go ahead and take the leads, connect them in parallel to the two series capacitance. And I can see that I get about eight microfarads. And if I lower down the dial, I get about a more accurate uh, reading of, you could say, 7.02. Okay? We can see that the result on the multimeter is slightly bigger than the one that we've calculated, and this is due to the tolerances because the values of the capacitors are not 22 microfarads exactly, but have some kind of error. Now that we've taken a look at series capacitance, how to measure the equivalent series capacitance and how to measure capacitors with the help of multimeters, let's take a look at a parallel, uh, parallel capacitor circuit and measure the parallel capacitance. First, let's start calculating the parallel capacitance. We have two parallel capacitors of 22 microfarads and 10 microfarads. Therefore, calculating the sum of individual capacitances yields a capacitor value of 32 microfarads. So let's jump over to the workbench and verify. Now, doing the same, but for the two parallel capacitance, we should get about a 32 point something, since we are adding up the capacitance, just as we've seen and calculated. So I'll go ahead and place the leads across these two capacitors. I can see that the reading is too high for the uh, 20 microfarad. Therefore, I should turn the dial to a more bigger range. And when I do so, I get 35.0 or 35.0 microfarads for these two capacitance in parallel. As you can see from what we've measured, we got a value of 35 microfarads, and this is because of the tolerances. Thank you for watching this video, and if you found it useful, consider subscribing to my channel. Or if you'd like to support me, you can do so through Patreon, which you can find in the description below. Stay tuned for the next video, and as always, thank you for watching.